Hello, and welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert, and in this screencast we're going to make a shell game. This is also known as Three Card Monty. You usually have three shells and then a penny or a marble or something underneath one of them, and they get swapped around and you have to pick out which one it is at the very end. It's also a common street scam called Three Card Monty. So the cheesy puffs are behind that cat, and you just have to keep an eye on which cat it's behind. And the game slowly gets faster and faster and fa- and what it- uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, Wow, that, um... Hmm. Uh, is it in the middle? Oh, no, it's not. It was on the right one. Ugh. Well, let's go ahead and see how we can create this game. Now, first, we're going to need three of these cats. So right-click on the sprite and select Duplicate, and then do that again. So we're going to have a cat on the left, and a cat on the right, and a cat in the center. Go ahead and rename these cats too, so we can tell them apart. So this will be left cat. Make sure that's left cat, yeah. And this one will be center cat. And this one will be right cat. And we're going to have these cats always in a very particular place on the stage so at the very start of the game. So go to the brown events section and grab this when green flag clicked. And underneath that, grab one of these go to XY blocks from the dark blue motion category. And the cat on the left will be at an X of negative 160 and a Y of 0. And then, as a shortcut, we can just pick up this entire code block and drag it over the other sprites to copy it over there. So it snaps back into place there, but now the center cat also has this. And we're going to copy it to the right cat as well. However, the center cat is going to start off at a X coordinate of 0, and the right cat will start off at an X coordinate of positive 160. Now we're going to add the prize, the cheese puff. So click on the choose sprite from library block. Let's go to the Things category and select the Cheesy Puffs. So we're going to need a variable to that, that controls the speed of the swaps. So go to the Orange Data section and click on the Make a Variable. And we'll just call this variable Speed. And make it for all sprites. Go ahead and click OK. Now as the very first thing we want to have happen in this program for the Cheese Puffs is they'll set the speed to 0.3. So go to the brown events section and grab that when green flag clicked. And then grab this set speed block. And we can set that to 0 0.3. And then the cheesy puffs will hide themselves because we don't want it to show up at the very start of the game. Next we're going to have to randomly decide which cat these should hide behind. In fact, let's go ahead and click on the green flag. You can see the cats snap into their proper places at negative 160, 0, and 160, and the cheese puffs disappear. So we'll have to decide where the cheese puffs go, and we can do that in the green operator section with a block that's called pick random 1 to 10. And since we have three different cats, we'll just need a random number from 1 to 3. So we'll have to create another variable that stores this random number. So go ahead and click on make a variable, and we'll just call it random and it can be for all sprites. So grab this set random block and now we're going to set the random variable to a random number from 1 to 3. So whatever random number this block comes up with it'll be stored in the random variable. We can click on the green flag and you can see at that time it stored 2 into random. And if you click on it again it might change to 3 or 1 or 1 again or 2 we're also going to want a variable that keeps track of where the cheesy puffs are, and we'll just click on make a variable, and we'll just call that, um, I don't know, food position. And this variable will contain the text left, center, or right. So we want to have the food position variable be set to left, center, or right, depending on whether or not random is set to 1, 2, or 3. So go to the orange control category, and we'll grab one of these if blocks. And then we'll need an equal sign from the green operators category. 
And then in the data section, we'll grab this random block. And so if random is equal to one, we'll want to set the food position variable to left. And then we'll do the same thing for random equals two and random equals three. And we can do the little shortcut of duplicating this by right clicking on that if block and then selecting duplicate. And then I'll duplicate that again. And then just change this so that it says if random is equal to two, then we'll set food position to center. And if random is equal to three, we'll set food position to right. Next, we'll want the cheese puffs to rise up from behind whichever cat it's uh, sitting behind, either the left one or the center one or the right one. We'll do that by broadcasting a message called reveal. So click on the black triangle and select new message and the new message will be reveal. Now grab the when I receive reveal block and we'll have some code execute whenever it the reveal message gets broadcasted. And we'll have some of the other sprites eventually also broadcast this, which is why we don't just slap the code underneath here. Let's make the sprites show up real quick. I'll just grab this show block and double click it. And what we want to have happen is the sprites will first make themselves visible, and then they'll glide up slowly and then glide down slowly and then make themselves invisible again. So first of all, we have to position the sprite behind the correct one, depending on what value is in food position. So we'll need three if blocks. I'll just create one and then duplicate them later. We'll need it so that if the food position variable is set to left, center, or right, we move the cheese puffs to a different x, y coordinate. So if food position equals left, we want to send the cheese puffs behind the cat on the left, which remember is at an x of negative 160 and a y of 0. And we can duplicate this. And so if the food position is center, we'll put the cheese puffs right where the center cat is. And then duplicate this again. If the food position is at right, We'll put it at 160 where the right cat is located. And next we want the cheese puffs to rise up and then go back down and then hide itself. So first we'll make it visible and then we'll grab this glide block which causes the sprite to slowly move towards this xy coordinate. Now the X will stay the same, so we can just say go to the same X position that you're currently at. And for the Y position, we want this to rise up to 100. And then we want it to glide back down, so we'll duplicate this, except then say 0. And we can make this a glide a little bit faster, we'll say 0.75. And then we have the cheese puffs hide themselves. So let's test this out. When I click the green flag, first the speed variable gets set, then random gets set to a random number. And based on that random number, the food position variable gets set to left, center, or right. And then we broadcast reveal. Actually, what we should have this do is broadcast and wait. We don't want the code on this script to continue past this broadcast until all of this code has completed. So once reveal is broadcasted, depending on the food position variable, the cheese puffs will change its location to one of the cats, and then it will show itself and then glide up to the y coordinate of 100 and then glide back down to the y coordinate of 0 and then hide itself. So let's click on the green flag. That's pretty nice. We can see it's randomly picking a different cat to be behind. And now we'll add some more broadcasts that will tell the cats to swap positions. So I'm gonna to have to move this off to the side. And we have five different ways that the cats can swap positions. We can either have the left and center cat swap, or the center and right cat swap, or the left and right cat swap, 
or the remaining two ways are all the cats can move over to the right, and then this cat on the right will go all the way back to the left, or we can have all the cats move to the left, and then the leftmost cat goes all the way to the right. Since there are five different ways, we're going to have to create a random number between 1 and 5, and we'll store that in the random variable. So set random to a random number between 1 and 5. And we'll need some if blocks right after that to broadcast the appropriate message. So I can actually just duplicate this equal sign and random right there. If random equals 1, we'll want to broadcast a message that says swap left center. That'll tell the cat sprites that the left and center cats need to swap positions. Then we can go ahead and duplicate this. And duplicate it again. And I need a fifth one, so I'll just add that. So if random is 2, we'll want to broadcast a new message that says swap left and right. And if random is 3, we'll have the center and right cat swap position. And if random is four, we can just say shift to right. And if random is five, we'll just broadcast a message that tells the cats to shift to the left. Okay. So now we need these cats to respond to those messages whenever they're broadcasted. They also have to respond to the correct broadcast. So the left cat will have to move whenever left right is broadcasted or when left center is broadcasted, but not when center right is broadcasted. It just sits there. And we're going to use a simple animation trick. So we'll have, say the left and center cats are swapping position. We'll have this left cat go up and the right cat go down. And the left cat goes to where the center sprite was, and then the center cat goes to where the left cat's at, and then we'll have them instantly swap back to their original positions. That way the cats never actually swap their positions, but it looks like they do. So we don't actually have to have these cat sprites moving around everywhere, and that's going to be kind of complicated to keep track of. Instead, we can just always have the exact same sprites in the same left, center, right locations. I'll show you what I mean. So this left cat needs to respond to this swap left center. And first we'll have the cat go to this position, which will be an x of negative 80 and a y of 100, and then move down to 0, 0. So let's grab that glide block from the blue motion category. Set this to negative 80 and 100. And instead of one second, We'll just have this move at speed seconds. Remember, at the very start of the program, we had the cheese puff sprite set that variable to 0.3. So in about a third of a second, it glides up and then glides back down. Meanwhile, we'll also need this code in the center cat. So I'll just copy it there. But for the center cat, the center cat will go to negative 80, but negative 100 for y. So we'll, we'll change this to negative 100, and then it'll go to the left cat's position at negative 160, 0. And then we'll have these cats go straight back to their original position. So the center cat will just immediately teleport and go to x and y of 0, 0. Whereas the cat on the left will immediately go to negative 160 and 0. So we can just temporarily grab one of these broadcast blocks and execute it just to see if this code works. So broadcast swap left center and double click it to broadcast that message. Perfect. We're going to have this go over and over and over again. Now remember, the left cat always ends up back at the left position because it moves up and moves down, but then instantly teleports back, while simultaneously the center cat teleports back to the center. And that's why it looks like you can always just keep swapping them around over and over and over again. It's just a simple animation trick. 
And now we'll have to add swap codes for all of the other different types of swapping. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this since the code is so similar. We can test this out. Broadcast swap left right. Now shifting to the right will be kind of tricky because it involves all three of the sprites. So this cat will move to the center location, the center cat will move to the right location, and then the right cat will move all the way back to the left. So I'm going to move this code over to make some room. When I receive shift to right, the left cat will want to shift to negative 80 and 0. And then to the center cat's position at 0, 0. And then just go back to where it originally was. Whereas the center cat will go to x of 80 and 0, and then to the right cat's position at 160, 0, and then teleport back to its original place at 0, 0. Meanwhile, the right cat will go down here to x of 0 and y of negative 100, and then to the left cat's position. Oof, this is getting crowded. Let's test this out by broadcasting that message. Oh, I accidentally broadcasted the reveal message, but good to know that still works. Perfect. And then we'll just duplicate this for shifting to the left. I'll have to make some changes. So this is the right cat, and shifting to the left, it'll go to x of 80 first, and stay at 0 for the y-axis, and go to the center cat's position. Meanwhile, the center cat We'll go to negative 80 and then negative 160. And the cat on the left, when it shifts to the left, will go above the center cat but at y of 100. And then to the right cat's position. Let me test that out just to make sure I got it right. Shift to right. Shift to left.
right. Let's go back to the cheese puffs code. Now this code right here randomly picks one of the five different swaps to do and then execute it. But we actually want to do several different swaps. So let's grab a repeat block from the orange control section and put all of this code inside of it. And we'll do 30 different swaps. So let's test this out. I'll click on the green flag. It does the reveal. And then it does all these different swaps. But if you notice, the value for the food position variable stays the exact same. That's because although we're moving these cats around, we're not actually updating the food position variable. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll have to add this code to the cheese puffs scripts. So I'm going to have to make some room over here. So let's think about what the cheese puffs code has to do whenever it receives one of these swap broadcast. So let's say the center and right broad message has been broadcasted. This means that if the food position variable is in the center, it needs to change to the right because the center and right cats have swapped. But if food position was set to right, then it needs to be set to center because the center and right cats have, have swapped. So let's go to the orange control section and grab this if else block. Then let's grab an equal sign and then that food position variable. So if the food position is equal to center, we're going to set food position to right. Otherwise, we should check if the food position variable is set to the right and then set it to center. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this block and just set that to right. And duplicate that block and set it to center. Now you might be wondering why we have if else right here. I mean, couldn't we just have something simple like, I'll duplicate this around. Like, couldn't we just have two if statements one after the other? Well, not really, not for this case. Because think about what would happen if food position was set to center. This condition would be true, so this block executes and sets food position to right. But then right after that, food position is equal to right, and that's also true because we just set it to right, and then it would set it back to center. So it starts off as center and then ends up as center, so that actually wouldn't be swapping the code. That's why we need this if else block here instead of just two if blocks like this. And now we'll have to duplicate this for all of the different swaps. So this will be left, and center, and center, and left. And this will be left and right. And if it's right, then we'll set it to left. And the shifting code is a little bit trickier because we need all three cases covered. So I'm going to duplicate this if else once I take out that other if block in there and put that in there. So now when we shift to the left, if the food position was on the left, it'll then be on the right. So that's already set up for us. Otherwise, if the food position was in the center, it'll shift over to the left. And if the food position was in the right, it'll shift over to the left and end up in the center. We'll duplicate this one more time. shift to right. We'll have to make this logic backwards. If it's right and we shift it to the right, it'll end up in the center. And if it was in the center and we shift it to the right, it'll end up in the right cat's position. And if it was on the right and it shifts to the right, it'll go all the way back to the left cat's position. Wow, that's a lot of code for this. Let's test this out. So it's behind the left, and hey, looks like the uh, it's actually following where it looks like it would be. That's kind of nice. 
Okay, now that we have the cat swapping around and the food position variable is correctly updating itself, we need to let the player click on which cat they think the cheese puffs are behind. So first, we'll paint a new sprite that just has a simple text message. Get the text tool, and the text will just say, where is it? Make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So for the cheese puffs code, after it's done doing all those different swaps, remember that's down here, it's doing 30 different swaps, we'll have it broadcast a message that says ask the player, which will cause this sprite to appear. So broadcast, new message, ask player. So the where is it sprite, at the very start of the game, it'll just hide itself. So go to the purple looks category and grab that hide block so that when the game first begins and the green flag is clicked, it'll hide itself. And then it just waits for that ask player message to be broadcasted. And that will cause the sprite to show itself. Now at this point, the player can then click on one of the cats and we'll add some code that that checks if the cheese puffs are behind the cat that the player clicked on, but we don't want the player clicking on the cats while they're swapping around. So let's create a new variable from the orange data section. Click on make a variable, and we'll call this variable can pick cat. And it'll be for all sprites. So at the very start of the game, we'll set this can pick cat variable to no. But once this where is it text appears, then we'll set the can pick cat variable to yes. And I'll show you why this variable is important. Let's go to the left cat and go to the events section and add this when the sprite is clicked. So after the player clicks on this left cat, if the food position is set to left, then the player is won. Otherwise, the player is lost and the food was actually behind one of the other cats. But we only want that code to execute if can pick cat is set to yes. So let's go to the orange control section, grab this if block, then go to the green operator section and get an equal sign, then grab that can pick cat variable. So if can pick cat is equal to yes, then we'll actually add the code that checks if the player chose the correct cat or not. Otherwise, it'll do absolutely nothing. So until can pick cat is set to yes, which remember happens after ask player is broadcasted, then we'll actually execute the code that sees if the player guessed correctly or not. And to do that, we'll need an if else block. And so if food position is equal to left, then the player guessed correctly. So let's grab an equal sign from the green operator section and grab that food position variable. And then if food position equals left, we'll broadcast a new message that says uh, player one. So broadcast a new message. This one will, we'll just say winner is the message. Otherwise, we'll broadcast a message that says loser. And then we can just copy all these blocks of code to the other cat sprites. So for the center cat and for the right cat. Of course, since when this sprite is clicked now means the center cat, we're gonna have to say if food position equals center, then the player won, otherwise they have lost. And for the right cat, change this to if food position equals right. So now we just have to add code that handles when the winner and loser messages are broadcasted. And we'll create a couple new sprites, one for the winning message and one for the losing message. So go ahead and paint a new sprite, convert uh, convert it to a vector mode, grab the text tool. We'll say this is the winner sprite, so we'll use green and just say winner. We can make that bigger. Much, much bigger. There we go. We'll set that there at the bottom. Name the sprite itself winner also. And then we'll also create another new sprite, convert it to vector mode also, and then click on text, 
and this time we'll have it in red text say, you lost. Make that much, much bigger. In fact, we'll also add a frowny face. So just like the where is it sprite, we're going to want to have these, these pieces of text hide themselves at the very start of the game. So when the green flag is clicked, we'll just have them hide themselves. And I'll copy this code over to the winner sprite also. And then the you lost sprite will wait until it receives that loser broadcast. And when that happens, this sprite knows that it should show itself. And then go ahead and end the program. So go to the purple looks category, grab show, and then in the orange control category, grab stop all, which will stop the program. In fact, this is exactly what we need for the winner sprite as well, so I'll just copy it to that sprite. Except this shows itself when it receives the winner broadcast. So let's try this out. Cheese puffs are in the center. Ah, this isn't that hard. In fact, we can go ahead and cheat because the variable is showing itself right here. So I don't even have to pay attention to this. I can just look at it once it's done Show swapping touch. around. Swapping around. And food position is in the right. Hey, winner. And actually, let's go ahead and have the winner and loser sprites broadcast that reveal message as well. That way the player can be sure that the cheese puffs were behind that cat. So go to the brown events category. Let's broadcast reveal. And do the same for the you lost sprite. Now we can make this game go by a little bit faster by setting the speed to some lower value. How about how about zero for no delay whatsoever? And oh wow, they go so fast that you don't even see them glide around at all. But I can tell that the food is behind the center position. So that's great. Oh, well the reveal didn't have time to finish. And that's because I was supposed to actually broadcast and wait. Otherwise, we broadcast that message and then immediately show and then stop the program so the gliding animation for the reveal doesn't have time to run. So I'll just replace those real quick. And try that again. And zip, 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 zip. Yeah, it's behind the center one again. Winner. That's nice. Now how about I have it show it and then reveal? And let's just test it out for the losing case as well. So it's in the center again. I'll click on this. Oh, and it says you lost. That's pretty good. Let's go back and set the speed back to 0 0.3. But 0 0.3 is kind of slow. Let's add one final piece of code that makes the cats swap around faster and faster as they go. So I'll go to the data section. Let's change a variable. And the variable we'll change will be speed by 0 0.01. Actually, negative 0 0.01. So speed starts off at 0 0.3, and 30 times it will execute this minus 0 0.01, which means that the final swap will actually be instantaneous. So let's go ahead and try this out. Oh, but first, let's remove the cheat factor from this. All right, click the green flag. Oh, no, no. Yeah, this is pretty easy. Yeah, now it's on the left and right and left and center. Right. Um, yeah, okay, I still have it. It's uh, right in the end. Oh, it did. Huh. I, uh, mm, center one? Oh, no. 
is behind the right one. That makes it a little bit impossible at the very end, so maybe if we change this to 0 0.35, so that way it won't be instantaneous. It'll just be very, very fast. Usually when they play three-card Monty as a street scam, there's an accomplice in the crowd who will easily win the game the first few times, so it gets other people to think that they can win, and that's when they start going super fast, and then... Oh, uh, I've completely forgotten which cat I wasn't paying attention. Oh, hey, dumb luck. All right. So that's the entire shell game. That's a lot of code if we look at it. So this program makes use of broadcasts a lot. It's a great way of having one sprite communicate when another sprite should start doing something. So for example, we have broadcasts here for the reveal, and then broadcasts to the cat sprites to swap around. And the cheese puffs themselves have to handle that shifting and swapping broadcast just to update the food position variable. And then we have more broadcasts that tell where is it to show up, and also broadcasts that tell the winner and you lost to show up also. So that's it for this game. You can find more of these screencasts at inventwithscratch.com. Thanks for watching.